All right, welcome. We are finally getting back to Traveler here and <clears throat> our crew on the ISS Intrepid here doing their scouting mission. Um, where I left it off last is they've uh, jumped into the system, this new system, and they have to scan it and uh, I'm using <clears throat> this is an opportunity to put the new World Builders Handbook that recently came out from Mongoose through its paces. Uh, it's a remake of an earlier version of World Be uh, Builders Handbook. I did use that in a previous video um, for mapping out some of these. So, uh, and let's see. So, and disclaimer here again, I think I've mentioned this in my philosophy. Um, <coughs> Traveler, while it is an RPG, <clears throat> and the vast majority of people use it to generate characters and travel and encounters and etc. And this back end stuff is mainly viewed as, you know, mapping out systems and <clears throat> details is mainly viewed as uh, something done by the game master, for example, <clears throat> to provide the setting. Um, I'm actually coming from a di different angle. My uh, The RPG portion is <clears throat> somewhat secondary to me. I'm just using that as my vehicle to then go and put all of these through its paces, um, all these generation things. So uh, this is more a kind of a simulation more than an RPG, so I just wanted to set expectations up front. <clears throat> Although there is some good RPG resources out there that I've been using. Okay, with that said, um, so we are in the Caravan system. I got that name. And the scene we're setting up right now is I've got to do the initial scan of the system and then potentially make a decision, uh, main world, gas giant, refueling, etc. So when I come to the world builder's handbook here, um, and here here we are uh, on, this, on the sector map, and uh, their goal is to move down this way, map this out, because as soon as they came up this way, they bumped into some pre-existing empires, uh, which had some interesting encounters there in previous videos. So coming over here to the World Builders Handbook, the other thing I've, I'm playing with is AI. This is uh, Bing Chat here. And uh, previous video I talked about this. If and This is the only one I've found that can do this, um, unless you want to pay a subscription fee. But uh, analyze existing documents. In this case, I've got this time up the PDF for the World Builders Handbook, and if you're using the uh, developer's version of Edge, you can uh, load a document up here, and I haven't pushed it too much, but I always say from the document in the browser, and then I ask a question. And it seems to work. In a previous video, I did a set of world game, wargaming rules, and it's not perfect, but it's not bad. So I'm using this, and uh, I basically ask the question, uh, provide a detailed step-by-step -step process for creating a system, orbits, and planets. And it did okay, and it's got references, which is helpful. Basically, it says, need to use the, pick your method here, and uh, I'm actually doing the continuation method. I already have a main world that I previously had generated earlier. All of these do. But you can create a system totally from scratch and figure out the main world later, but it does say continuation world, so I'm going to start with the UWP data, at least the X424, um, and then uh, next you need to term characters to star, and I did that in a previous video, I think it's an MV class 0, I think I got some spreadsheets with that info, I'll pull that up in a little bit. Then you need to determine the number and types of worlds in the system, gas giants, planetoid belts, terrestrial planets. And there's tables in here to do that. And they do give you a reference. Yeah, there we go. It does jump there. After that, you need to determine available orbits. Minimal allowable orbit for each. Use formulas and procedures. Next, you need to place the worlds in their orbits. Um, which And the main world has to be closest to habitable. That's all correct. Yeah, there we go. System spread. Then you need to determine basic size, composition, and uh, let's see, and I think significant moons are in here. And then we need to put it in the appropriate document. So, interesting. I'm going to keep pushing this, but uh, the main goal of this video is uh, go ahead and review going through this um, 
for the system generation here to continue on with the scanning. And there are some other resources that have just come out. I think uh, one of my commenters mentioned, I, I don't know what it's called, RIM something. I'll open it up in a second, too, that I'll look at before a full review. Um, but here we are. we got the continuation method. And the first thing, if we're using the continuation method, yep, is gas giants. Um, and let's see, I did that. Hopefully you can see this over here. Gas giant exists on a roll of 9 or greater, or if you want to do 1D, 2, or higher. Pretty much high odds there. And then you roll for gas giant quality, um, quantity. And you see here we've got, uh, I have an M0V class star. i got a class V star. Five star, so I got a plus one, and I got a seven, so I got three gas giants. Um, we don't have a main well size zero; it's actually size four, approximately the size of Mars. So uh, we go. Planetoid belt exists on an eight plus, and I rolled a nine, so they do exist. Which I then followed up with a quantity is two D plus D M. Um, and then let's see, system has one or more gas giants, that's plus one. Uh, and I don't think plus one, any of these other ones apply. So we rolled a seven, plus one is an eight. We have two planetoid belts. Okay, we got that. Um, now the number of terrestrial planets. Okay. And it, it again is 2d minus two plus dms. Um, not post stellar. And if you get less than three or greater than three, you can add to that. So I rolled over here. I rolled an 11. Minus two is nine. So I got nine. And if it's greater than nine, I also add D3 minus one, which I rolled. Two minus one is one. Didn't roll very... Oh, D3. So that's pretty good. So I have a total of 10 terrestrial planets. So total worlds, orbits, whatever, three gas giants, two planetoid belts, and 10 terrestrial planets. That gets me to 15. Um, this is what took a little while here. Now we have to figure out the orbits, and that gets a bit interesting. <clears throat> Luckily, I didn't get a multi-star system. That makes things more complex. I just have a single star system. So the first thing we have to do is figure out the minimal allowable Minimum allowable orbit number, so I got an M0, class 5, which tells me it's a 0 0.02 AUs. Okay. Um, and then another one, and this is where I kind of ran into a wall for a while. They got alternate ways to do it, multiple ones. But the next thing we had to figure out was the habitable zone center. Um, and again, we're M0, class 5, um, in AU is 0 0.29, which um, orbit number, though, is uh, M0, class 5, 0.72. Yep, I got that. So we do have the habitable, habitable zone of 0.72. Okay. Um, and that's where we're going to place the main world. That's where we're going to place the main world. Converting the above AU values into orbit number results in the following. Yeah, that's good. Okay. So we've got the habitable zone. And they, what's the span of the habitable zone? Uh, usually plus or minus a one orbit number. So basically that's all the way into the minimum orbit number all the way out to 1.72. So let's see. Um, so if I have to do the breadth, breadth, I can't pronounce that word. Um, it's 0 0.02 to 0.02 to uh, 1.72. So anything in there is in a kind of reasonable habitable zone region. region okay. Um, 
So that's where I'm going to have to place my main world since I'm doing the continuation method. Uh, let's see, we come down here. This is rather involved, um, especially if I had more than one star. Uh, we had a baseline number less than one, but we're doing greater. Here, placing is this the main world, the baseline orbit, continuation method only. Uh, main world orbit becomes the baseline number. Let's see what we got here. So continuation mirror world is inhabitable zone, so I'm just placing it at 0.72 um, initially. Uh, and we do have a weak star. M0V is not a very strong star, so it does kind of make sense. Um, need to do the temp roll, which I didn't do in page 251 of the core. So here I've got the core rule book up, page 251. Um, and we did have to make a roll here, which I hadn't done initially. Um, so the atmosphere is 2, so we have a DM of minus 2. Uh, optionally, ref may choose to add to impose one of the following hot edge of habitable zone, cold edge of habitable zone. Um, so, wow, even going through this, I'm starting to get a little confused here. This baseline need to do temp roll. Raw roll was 11. I did a raw roll. We haven't modified it yet. So you do take the raw roll of that temp, which tells me that the deviation is... Um, it's, well, 11 tells me it's hot. 0.72 minus 0.4 equals 0.32. Hot world. Okay. Okay, yeah, this this is getting there now. Um, let's see, we did raw world was 11. And I think it was affected by this. HECO minus one minus the deviation, um, and if it's one, it's yeah. If the HECO is less than one, and the deviation is positive, it isn't HECO plus deviation. Somehow I got 0 0.4. Okay, here we go. The location of the HECO is a raw roll of seven, different roll results placement. So basically, you subtract seven from the raw roll. 11 minus 7 is 4, and that's therefore 0 0.1, 0 0.4 orbits. Okay, so that's interesting there. This is getting involved. So I didn't indicate that here. So I should say 11 minus 7 equals 4, and then we multiply that times 0 0.1, and it equals... 0 0.4, um, well, that didn't work, 0 0.4, uh, and we subtract that because it's a hot world we're coming in. So using those rules, I get a 0 0.32, which is still in the habitable zone because uh, we did get that range here of 0 0.02 to uh, 1.72. So. This planet is on the hot side, uh, and going from the core rule book, if you look at hot, it means it's, uh, here we go, 31 to 80 degrees, I believe that's in centigrade. Hot world, small or no ice caps, little liquid water, most water in the form of clouds. So we're going to have a lot of clouds here, too. All right, uh, let's see. Next step now becomes empty orbits, empty orbits here. Okay. Could be following this over here, but uh, there it is, step four, empty orbits. Uh, this one was easy. I rolled 2D, got an 8, and it's less than 9, so there's no empty orbits. Um, so that's done, uh, but there was something. Well, we'll see that in a second. <clears throat> then i got to figure out the base system spread between different planets' orbits. Um, that base number, then, <clears throat> there's an eccentric roll you do later, we'll see as we place them, so it doesn't, it's not just, you know, evenly spaced planets, but we've got to figure out the system spread, so the baseline is less than one, so you assume one for the calculation, 
Yeah, if the baseline number is less than 1, treat the baseline number as 1. Um, by the minimum of uh, my parents start, da 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 da, then divide the result, da 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 da. Well, baseline number is 1, so it's really baseline orbit number minus MAW. I think that was 0.02, so I get a 0.98 spread. Which, I'm going to cheat. That's close enough. One. That's my spread. Each it, The base spread between each orbit is going to be one. And then we'll roll for different things for eccentricity. Innermost planet is the MAO plus spread is 1.2. So, uh, so it's 0.32. I'm picking that for the habitable zone. So the main world, that's the point here. The main world is the one. And that kind of makes sense. Again, an M-class star is weak, um, we saw in previous, so it pretty much has to be right on top of the star. All the other planets um, are further out. So, place the rest of the objects. I have a total of 15 objects minus 1 is 14, because I got the main world in the first one. Um, and the spread is just 2D minus 7 divided by 10. Uh, so let's see, I, I rolled, um, and you, obviously if you roll less than 7, well, let's see what we got here. Yeah, we do, see how I got a mix? I'm not going to run through it, basically. Yeah, here's the 2d6, so this one I assumed was 0. 9 is up to, so that's a plus 0.2. 7 is a 0. 11 is a up, oh, up 7 and 5. That's 6. I'm not going to worry about that now. I think I did the math wrong. Either way. Orbit 3, and, and notice I just keep adding here. So an 8 is actually up by 1 tenth, 0.1. So I go 1.1 above this. A 10 is up 3 off 7, so it's point plus 0.3. So I'm going to go 1.3 above this. A 6 is down 1, so that's going to be 0.9 above this. And you see, you see, you get the idea here. A 2. Um, is, and I'll talk about this one in a second. A two, uh, a roll of two is down five, so it's a negative 0.5, so it's only 0.5, 6.8. And that continues all the way out. There's the rolls. So I do now have the orbit numbers of all of my, what they're going to be. I haven't rolled for this yet, so I've got <clears throat> my 15 orbits, but then you do something called um, their system spread. Then you do uh, anomalous planets, uh, things that don't fit nicely. I think Pluto, in our example, is <coughs> got an inclined orbit. Um, they use that as an example. So I rolled for that. I got a 10, which yields one anomalous orbit. And then you got to roll again to figure out the type. And I rolled a 7, and it's just a random orbit. And if you look at random orbit here, it does not correspond to the spread pattern. It's not multi-spar for the assigned star. I rolled 2d minus 2 to determine the orbit number value, and add a t10 to determine the fractional value. So I rolled a 9, minus 2 is 7, but then I rolled another 9, so it's 7.9. And it literally almost put it right on top of this planetoid belt. Well, we're going to see later that this, I didn't know it was a planetoid belt. But um, this says now I've got an anomalous planet here. Okay. Now, though, I have to place, and yeah, here they give you an example. Um, planet 9 is Pluto. Yeah. Pluto has an eccentric orbit, so that's our anomalous planet. Okay. Then we have to place worlds, and the, the, the only limiting thing that I could say, they give different ways to do it, multi-star. But you have to place the main world first, which I've already done. Then you place your gas, then you place your empties, which I don't have any. Then you place gas giants, which we'll do. And then I place planetoid belts, and then I place planets. What's left over is planets. So I went through, and I just came up with my own arbitrary... Uh, you know, count how many empties there are, and I had an online one, so I could set it like the first one I rolled would be a, well, the anomalous planet popped up here, that's interesting, but I had 
15 minus 1 is 14, so I just said roll a d14 and uh, just added it. And so my gas giants ended up being placed um, here, here, and here. And then I rolled for my planetoid belts, which ended up here and here, which is right next to the anomalous planet, so I can come up with a story here. Something happened, I don't know, planets collided, one planet hit the other, who knows. But these two are right on top of each other. And then the rest are just terrestrial planets, whatever is empty is terrestrial planets. So now I'm, I'm building it out, I got my orbit number, I know what object is there. Um, and then after I've placed the worlds, and they give you things about how to calculate it, um, uh, then there's eccentricity, default planet designations. They get into this. I didn't calculate this yet, but uh, I have a feeling it's going to be a very short year. I guess this is the only one that really matters. I'll calculate that later. How long is the year? But then I go through and I do basic world sizing. Now, I don't have to do it for the main world. It's a size of four from previous generation. But then I come here for basic world sizing. And uh, let me see, I gotta remember how I did this. Um, zero six size. This is just giving you how big it really is. Here it is, this is the operative die. I uh, just rolled a bunch of die, you know, if you roll the first die you roll if it's one of these and that determines your second roll and that gives you your size ranges. So if I roll a 1 or 2, I'm rolling 1d6, 1 to 6. If I roll a 3 or 4, I'm rolling 2d, which could be 2 to 12c using hexadecimal. And if I roll a 5 or 6, I get 2d plus 3. And I, and I got a mix. I didn't record those die rolls, but I did record the ending sizes here for the terrestrial worlds for um, this one's rather big eight one seven six you know there's a big one C right here at the outside here but um, the interesting thing is and I didn't mention this before is um I got my range of what the habitable zone is 0.02 to 1.72 um, That's a planetoid belt. So the only other thing in the habitable zone is a planetoid belt. Um, I don't know what I can do with that. But the point is these other planets, they're too far away. They're going to be cold, frozen, whatever. So truly the only kind of really hot, cloudy, jungle, moist world it's feeling like is going to be this one. And then next out is a planetoid belt. And then we're out of the habitable zone. Anyway, I got those sizes. A different table for gas giant sizing. <clears throat> um, there is a DM here. Primary star is a bronze M type, so I was applying a minus one. And system spread is less than 0.1, and it is not, so that didn't apply. So I rolls through, and I got, and I didn't push it too far. I just got the idea. Um, so this one is a medium-sized gas giant, size of Jupiter, roughly. And then the outer two are the size, roughly, of Neptune. You can go more details. Uh, and then that took me to significant moons. Um, and we do see here, I went through, and uh, basically it's straightforward. Uh, just go on this based on the planet size. <clears throat> and then you got gas giants and medium gas giants. Um, so 2d minus 8, 1d minus 5, that pretty much drives down the possibilities here. Uh, amazingly, oh, I didn't roll this out yet. Uh, I got to I gotta roll these sizes out here for this one. But um, we do see with when it comes to significant moons, this one has 3, 7 around the medium size like Jupiter. Um, the anonymous planet, ironically, has two moons somehow. And then, uh, and they're rather big. There's something freaky going on here. You know, on this planet and a planetoid belt. I mean, you got the planet at six. It's got two moons, size two. And then it's right on top of a planetoid belt. Um, 
Something wild's going on here. Uh, the gas giants, four and five, moving out. Okay. So, and then they give more details here. Uh, I think that's their example. They go through and go through their examples. Um, and then we got to do the moon size. And here it is, one to three, it's small. Four to five, you roll a D3 minus one. And six, you roll for terrestrial, that means it's really big. And you roll, if it's a gas giant, you're rolling the special one. If it's terrestrial, size minus one, minus one D. Size of the planet, minus one, minus one D. And you see here, I did record, like for this one, uh, I got a one, a small, and actually a zero ring. And uh, here I got two rings and some ones, small, and I got a five at the end. That's a pretty big moon right there. So interesting stories there. These were size two. And then I got, you know, small, 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 two, small. Um, it looks like I still got to roll for this one because I got the moons. But I didn't roll for the size. I'll do that offline, but... Basically, I'll roll on this table to determine these six moons around this thing. Okay. So, let's see. That's that. And uh, I'm not going to worry about insignificant moves. I've got a lot of data now. Uh, I don't have to do main world candidate. And now it's a matter of uh, i got to fill out this chart here um, with all of this information now, building out the chart. So I'll do that offline too. Um, so as you can see, it's uh, rather involved. Um, if I do this enough, probably I'll get the hang of it. Uh, but I haven't even touched on the concept of a multi-star system, which adds even more complexities. But uh, in big picture, here's my end product, which I'm going to transpose over here later. Um, and we do see, yeah, this is interesting. So I can pretty much assess this and say what's probably going to happen next now is we're going to transit to the outer gas giant here. We're going to hopefully have better luck at refueling than we did the last time we did this. And in the Qatari system, that was a comedy of errors. Um, and then I'm thinking we'll probably uh, come down and at least uh, orbit the main world. Um, may or may not land. Um, and get some information from the main world just from uh, orbital survey and then proceed on um, and uh, I do want to mention at the end there is one resource I haven't covered it I hope to cover it uh, shortly I've got even more new resources there's a subsector guide I think and this rim expeditions and one of my viewers thank you very much I don't have it up to tell who it is but you know who you are recommended this to me took a look at it and yeah it's uh, it's kind of focused on your um, confederation. I think it's the Solomon. I can't even pronounce that. Uh, yeah, Solomani um, doing their rim um, expeditions, etc. I'll cover that later. And a lot of it is just background information on that. But now we've got more rules here. The exploration process. There's this universal research mechanic. I want to explain long duration starship operations and then here we go again star system generation planetary environments um, and I'm finding something interesting most of the the new references I found do not reference the world builders handbook it's almost like they're in parallel but one thing I do like out of this amongst other thing is is they talk about um, broad exploration patterns um, they talk about a rapid advance. Uh, you're doing known space. Uh, this is a part of the scout um, service. They map Imperium within. It's so big, they're constantly mapping it. Um, standard advance. Uh, posture attempts to balance speed of movement with obtain information. And we get an idea of how long. And then we've got the exploratory advance. Any situation where they're missions and emphasizing detailed exploration over speed of movement okay and then within that you've even got a full system exploration but uh, I just looked at this and I said oh this is a nice broad way to determine 
uh, what we're doing here. So they're doing up to five days exploratory advance, roughly. Uh, ship making exploratory advance more likely to spot points of interest. So they will go to the planet. Um, jump. Yeah, so they say for, if you're doing a previous one, rapid or standard, uh, normally jump to the nearest fuel source, refuel, go to the next. Okay. An exploratory advance may be conducted differently with the main world as the jump target and refueling to be conducted later. Well, you know, that's a captain's call, but uh, that's what we're going to be doing, an exploratory advance. So our two stops um, are going to be refueling and the main world. And uh, let's say based on all of this, um, me personally, if I was a captain, I guess I could roll. I would, I would refuel before I went into the main world. Um, because there's a bunch of stuff between me and the main world here, and who knows what's lurking out here, so I'd rather be refueled here. But I like this because it does now give me an idea, a pattern of, you know, how to do these kind of things. And then they talk about it here, they go into detail. This is an interesting one. I'm going to save this for a later video. Um, but, uh, yeah, this is in the RIM just released... Uh, Rim Expeditions, and uh, yeah, they do have some stuff, along with stuff about the Rim itself, and details, they have this exploration policy, universal research mechanic, long duration starship ops, star system, planetary environments, so, you know, if you don't want to necessarily use the World Builder's Handbook, now we have another streamlined procedure on how to do this, which I may try this one out at the next system we go to, instead of this detail, so... Anyway, now I'll continue to play with um, AI here to uh, give me um, some information. And actually, before we leave, let me ask it. Uh, let's see if I can just copy this and ask it again. But say it's now it's this other one time from the document Rim Expeditions. Yeah, that's, that's what it's called. Let's see if I can trick it into doing this one. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> Please go to this page, not the previous page. To create a system, orbits, and planets from the document Rim Expeditions in the browser, you can follow these steps. Um, or the more detailed method. The quick method is for creating system with only the most essential, such as... This could be true, actually. Um, it's not giving me references. Star bodies, luminosity, then you need to determine the presence of types of worlds. This could be it. Um, place them in their orbits. Uh, I'll, I'll jump there. Let's see if it's right here. Eh, it could be. could be. Yeah, that looks like it's following this thing now. Generate main world. No. Um, I don't know. I'll play with this later. But something worth playing with. And, of course, Bing Chat is free. So, done long enough. 33 minutes. If you got this far, thanks for listening. Um, if you like, click like. If you haven't subscribed and you want to, please subscribe. And like I said, next video... Well, the next travelers, I'm going to, from the point of view of the campaign here, we've got the trip to the outer gas giant and the refueling. Um, and then we'll have another scene, I guess, of, depending on what happens there, proceeding into the main world <coughs> and building that with the World Builder's Handbook, actually. Um, and go into those details. Yeah, I think that's where we're at here. They give examples. Look at that. They even generate distances. I guess I can make that. And then we get into this. This is the next big project here. Um, using this to map out the main world. <coughs> um, could use this for every world. <coughs> wow, this would take a lot of time. So I've turned a <coughs> RPG now into a Massive detailed systems um, simulation. Uh, probably not what the creators intended, but hey, this will keep me busy for a while doing this to every system here. <coughs> so tune in next time and we'll see how the Intrepid does. 
refueling and then doing the main world and hopefully I'll get some more reviews of these other products I've got a little more detailed um, in the next videos. Thanks for listening.